Happy Sunday, and welcome back to Retake the Week. It's been, Jesus, it's been a terribly quiet week. It's It's gone to the point where I'm trying to watch random grassroots Swedish CS on a, like, Saturday, rather than actually uh, anything good, because there's nothing going on. Nothing going on at all. Um, not even much news to catch up with, so we're going to have uh, the week, the monthly member Q&A, and then we're going to talk about the brief eternal shuffle points that have come up over the course of these last five-ish days, because the last episode was recorded on a Tuesday. Um, so let's get into this. Uh, let's start off with... Well, let's start off with the member promo. Bloody hell. I'm always forgetting myself. So, members get access to uh, behind-the-scenes content, which is being uploaded currently as we speak. Uh, they also get access to special interviews uh, with um, coaches, but soon to come more players. Uh, there's going to be a heavy focus on the women's scene, so if you're interested in that, there's going to be a lot of interviews coming. There's also members-only access to certain demo reviews, and of course, you get access to the monthly Q&A. So, uh, on my left here, you've got a bunch of thumbnails, the examples of the stuff that's going to be on there, and there's much more to come. So, if you want to see that, become a member. Uh, but back to the main show, quick. How bored have you been this week? Uh, quite bored. There's not a lot of. There, there's nothing to write about. Um, I mean, we, we're hosting our, our first, uh, like, our first own tournament, just to Sweden, which is nice, which is what's going on. That's the grassroots Sweden thing. Yeah. It's it's small. Uh, only the final is going to be HLTV covered, which is played later today. Uh, it's only broadcast in Swedish. Um, it's just a cool off-season thing. It's more fun. I think, like, I think it might be more fun for us than it is for the teams playing, but <laughs> it is also qualifying for a later fifteen thousand dollar dust two event, at some which is happening at some point later on. <clears throat> so um, I think I think it's still it's still cool, but um, yeah, I, I I'm quite bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, understandably, I'm going to be honest. It's difficult just filling out the day without any real like action to follow. The occasional yeah. little dribble of news, but let's get into it with the member Q&A, as I said we would. First question from the beautifully named Zerp Herp Derp. If you had to add a map into the map pool, which one would it be and what would it come in for? Uh, so this is a question that I think a lot of us want to immediately answer from almost a point of like petty selfishness and nostalgia. Like all of us have that map we just want to play again, I think. Mm. Especially if you've been playing Counter-Strike for eight, nine, further, like, years and years. Some 1.6 fans, you know, always talking about Tuscan garbage, but whatever. Um, myself, I always have these little, like, nostalgic moments where I'm like, I want Cobble, I want Cash. Like, I remember back when we used to queue with my friends when we had a five stack, it was like Cobble, Cash, Inferno, Nuke. Those were the maps we queued and spammed relentlessly. And, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd play them, which one you played, you'd take out the fucking list, play the next three, take one out, take, until you finally played everything, and maybe then you'd play Mirage. Because there's always that one guy, you know, who's like, oh, why don't we play Mirage, guys? That one idiot. Um, but no, I'm not going to bring those maps back, though. Cobble, Cash, I'm sorry. I feel like Cash has been, like, essentially supplanted by Ancient. It gives me the same vibes. It's my three laner. It's it's a little different in terms of the way you actually, like, fight for map control. But it's very similar. Once you get map control, you can crunch either bomb site pretty well you can wrap ct you can do some pretty effective lurks it's a cool map kind of fits the same purpose and i think cobble it's pure nostalgia that map was cancer it was gimmicky it was flawed it had some fun moments in the pro level but realistically that you remember the highlights you don't remember the matches is always the problem with cobblestone like you remember like the snacks is ha is hungry the big apple quote that's mm. awesome you remember watching like certain envious like death ball explosions up onto that a bomb site through the massive ramp with kenny s hitting crazy shots you don't remember the entire game because it was very slow and dull and like people would like take drop and then do nothing and it was very ugh, it is a bit a bit silly in that sense it stopped and started yeah people will go the valve broke cobblestone but like no they just changed it dramatically several times because it really needed that like it's oh yeah, that... the versions it went through when it was in the map pool were crazy. Like the version with the big yeah. open backspace, and then when they had to remove that because people were spamming auto snipers out of it, and it was so hard to smoke off. Yeah, it was a yeah, big, big like, issue. 
I won't say they improved it, but too much over time. But like, it was obvious that there were issues that they were trying to fix. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> if, we're, if we're talking about those like old nostalgic maps, it's like it's like it's it's cobble cash, and then some people will cry about Tuscan. Uh, there's always someone on the on the thread, and ever it comes yeah. up, there's always one guy like Tuscan's amazing. They yeah. added it in the game at one point in Go. I, th I think it was in Go. It wasn't fully polished, but it was like the layout. And I played it and thought, this, there's no way this was the map you lot wanted. It's so silly. No, nobody played it. Uh, I remember so few people played on it. This is a funny story. I remember so few people played on it. The one time when we were trying to play matchmaking. Uh, and we had six players and we were like, oh, what the fuck are we going to do? Like, oh, we should we should do two, three stacks. It's only fair. All right. Um, so we do that, and all of us queue Tuscan, and <laughs> the two Brit we had one British person on each team. Both lowered their like maximum ping to the absolute lowest, so we would make sure to get like a UK server. And I swear, I swear to God, we got a game against each other. Uh, yeah. And I will say, I will say on the record, I match fixed in that game. We we <laughs> absolutely threw it to make it a tie, and one person ranked up from that from that tie. Wow. So. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe uh, you're ruining yeah. your integrity right now, live on. This, <laughs> this is my huge admission of guilt. I match fixed a game on Tuscan in match in match in matchmaking in the, <laughs> in uh, somewhere on Silver Elite <laughs> in Jeez. the CS:GO. Yeah, I mean this that's still my... possible. They used to be possible on like a bunch of maps because back when there were like eight or nine maps, you could queue. Yeah. Like, I do remember with friends when we had enough people, we would try to do that, and it was possible on the lowest like available yeah. maps. I mean the thing here was nobody played Tuscan. Like it was it was certain we were gonna play against each other because we were the one Tuscan game happening at that point. Like <laughs> in in Europe. <laughs> so it was yeah. Like uh, nobody played yeah. it. I didn't I didn't think it was fun. I thought it was a very weird layout. Um mm. I think that, that map was designed for an entirely different game. Uh as were a lot of the games in Counter in Counter Strike, but at least with go they got a they got updated in a different way yeah. and like the it's a, like because we have very different timings now and we have very different utility usage it's all like oh, yeah. very it's it's very different now and and the new tusk conversion just didn't really get that because like inherently it is just weird like what i thought was so fucking weird is the weird underpass like into the bomb yes. site like you go up a ladder and then you come out a door like that makes no sense like it, yeah it's like a, a weird version Molotovs, of cash squeaking. A lot of things just don't make sense in, yeah. in these sorts of maps. Uh, but let's talk about actually the maps we can add. Because I've mm, got a very yeah. fixed list in my head of one mm. map that I think is reasonable to even want to add to the map pool. And it starts and ends with Train. I think Train, uh, it may need some things addressed because the way Smokes land now, i got a feeling it would either break it or it'd be the coolest map. Like, think about landing smokes on the edges of trains that would, like, drip down, like the way you see a lot of smokes thrown now to cover up, like, certain doorways. Using that to cover up, like, two sides of a train, like, at the back. Like, you could, you could do some pretty cool stuff. So I think train would benefit from having the revamped utility apply in a very cool and unique way. Um, mm. It would benefit from being, well, it's just a good map. Like, think about it. You can play it slow. You can play it fast. You can challenge for map control. You can play ultra passive uh, deep lines. You can rotate really easy as like the CTs, but on the T side, you can control certain rotation points to go fast as well. Like it is, I think, a really well designed map for Counter Strike that needs to be brought back into CS2. That's it's the one map I would truly make a case for. And I think with the narrow like pathways, all the smokes and all the like weird little interplay there's going to be, I think it'll be a really unique and fun map. I think it may get a bit buggy, and it may need some reworks in certain spots with the smokes. But overall, I can't think of another map that deserves to come back, that, that we've already seen, we know works at the pro level. We know it has some struggles in casual play due to the necessity for communications, and random children shouting slurs doesn't really help. But mm. it, it does work, I think, as a Counter-Strike map, and that's the one I'd bring back in. What I'd take out, though, is not going to be popular, because I'm leaving Anubis in, I'm leaving Vertigo in. I think it's fucking time for Mirage to take a walk. Like, it's been around too long. Everyone knows the smokes. That's how you know it's been around too long. Every kid from like 6k ELO up 
knows like half the smokes. It's been around too long. Let's cut it. It's we've also got too many like yellow dirt like desert maps. Get rid of it. <laughs> Bring in train. And I think the map pool looks a little bit brighter. Mm, okay. I think with train, I'm trying to think if there's any like fun one I want to bring back. Like if there's any operation map or anything that I think could have been brought back. You'll have to be Cause really were... picky because there's operation maps. They are really good. They are usually they were like a couple... gimmicky, but they're not good. There were a couple I really liked. I remember I, I liked playing Ruby a lot, but then I've looked it up in the past and like I don't know why I like to play that map so much. It was really weird. It had like <laughs> it had like a circular mid area with another big ring around it, so like you could do very weird rotations. Very weird. Um, I like playing Zoo a lot. I remember. I think I think Zoo was genuinely Zoo was viable. Funny. I thought it was fun, but I always thought it was just silly because the lighting was all over the shop. There's so many things that were like spammable. And it was pretty mm. big. Like, I, I, I was a bit yeah. into I thought it was, like, too interesting yeah, in a lot of spaces. I mean, it, it doesn't compare to the big ones. I think it could have been cool. I'm trying to I'm trying to toy with the idea of putting a hostage map in just for fun. I don't, I don't think... A hostage is inherently un, unbalanced, so I don't think it would actually work ever. Like, you couldn't make, you couldn't make a hostage map good enough for... Um, for competitive play because the thing about hostage mode is that in the round in a, in a diffusal round the t side go from being the attackers and then midway through the round they plant the bomb and they become the defenders and like you have this shift in like which team is doing what in hostage mode you just have the t side defending and then they take the hostage and you're still defending just a different place like it's um you don't have that same shift so like i think hostage mode, mode is always really boring um, but I, um, I'm trying to think if there's one you could put in. I mean, the one in my head is insertion just because it's cool. Like it's a really cool map, but, uh, no. Okay. I think realistically you're talking about, I think there's three maps that are competitively viable that could be in the pro pool. All of them have been in the past. Right. Um, it's train cash and overpass. Um, overpass was just recently taken out. I think, I think you you could make the case for overpass being in there. I think it is out of those three. I think it is the most viable right now. As uh, like in general, that's also including casual play. Train probably better competitively. Um, cash. The thing I always said about the thing I always said about cash is that it lacked in terms. For pro play, I think cash lacked because it was just a warehouse where you would aim. Like you had no options for like even a smoke execute. Like a, an AXEC on cash was one smoke, pretty much, for the the cross smoke. So you could cross into sight. Like that was that was an A execute on cash. And B side is indoors, so you can't even do that. Like Oh well, yeah. And that there's, could, there's many B side executes on cash. But it's not it's not the same though, is it? Like it's not the same as like doing something cool with I don't know. Uh, I I always thought it was a bit. It's it's just a bunch of rooms with right angles and like I thought I thought it was was a bit wonky. Um, I I don't I didn't I didn't think I don't think it was perfect. And then you had you had a place like Squeaky, which is just like rarely used. Like how often did you seriously use Squeaky as like a Vantage point on T side. Every pretty round, much in... if you're executing that site. Yeah, no, okay. Uh, <laughs> I. It's something you what can I... use if you weren't going that bomb site, obviously. But you had to yeah. kind of be aware of it. What I always thought was would be interesting in CS2 is when they announced that oh we're opening up all the skyboxes. I thought oh that might actually change some of those things because now you can basically you can throw whatever is fucking smoke you want. Like you can throw. The you can throw smoke on. Cash already had like really open skyboxes. You could throw stuff over. Not you just didn't because it didn't make any sense to do so. No, you the... couldn't throw. You couldn't throw into a site from T spawn. I remember you couldn't throw over a main. That was completely blocked off. Um, you basically had to throw it from mid, I think. And even then, I think there was like a big thing there. And I think B site you could have done it if you just opened up like the roof 
a bit, and then you could throw it from these Yeah, the roof was closed. You had to throw all your util from the window room, uh, the little yeah. side out, like room. And that's you could throw like a full exec out of there. Like you could smoke the heaven. Yeah. You could smoke the the CT rotation, and then oh, you could even drop... molly the site. Like you yeah. could throw everything out of there. Droppable smokes probably probably do change that map a lot. Yeah. Uh, but basically, opening up the... I always thought the skybox was quite quite close because I do remember you... Maybe they changed the like, late on, like late in CSGO, or maybe they added more skyboxes in and like this was an older version of the map. But I remember I remember you could like, you could only throw smokes out of T-spawn. You could only throw onto mid because that was the one everyone always threw onto Z on mid. Yep. Connector. Um, Still remember the lineup. Yeah, me too. Uh, that was the one smoke you could throw out of T-spawn. The rest you sort of had to throw out of main, which I always felt was a bit readable and very close and didn't leave a lot of room for creativity. But yeah, it's... Uh, I thought CS2 might change that with an open skybox. We don't have cash yet, so we don't know. But I also said the same thing about Dust 2 because that had the same issue where if you were throwing smokes, they kind of had to come from like the main entrance point. Uh, and that didn't improve Dust 2 at all. Like, Dust 2 in CS2, I still think, is really dull. Um, so I'm probably wrong about that thing, with cash getting better with that thing. Anyway, I think Train is probably the one you have to make a case for. Um, yep, and I have. I would cut Dust 2, I straight up. I'd, I hate playing <laughs> Dust 2. I'd keep, it's, been, it's been added, just remove it straight away. <laughs> I'm warming up to both Anubis and Ancient, because I actually play them now, and I feel like they're actually quite fun. Uh, Ancient is... Just, it's both like the praise and the criticism it gets, gets is that it is just made for competitive play. So of course it's good. Like it is made to be a good map, which makes it crazy. Which no, but I mean it's made it's made to which makes it fun because there's no bullshit. Like it's just straight competition between the two teams. But it also makes it boring because like it isn't the same sort of casual thing and like i think maybe some people would claim it's not it doesn't allow for the same creativity or like something like that i've seen different takes um I've and then seen a, I've, honestly ancient is a funny map like no one who plays it sub 15k knows how to play it and mm. so i usually get 30 kills that's the one yeah. map where i look good it's because i play mid on ct side i throw a smoke then just peak lane yeah and then over and over again and every time their solutions are one of two things Fight lane more aggressively, so I just get more kills because they're bad. Yeah. Or, this is my favorite one, just run through the mid smoke and then die anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I love playing Ancient right now in casual play just because of the lack yeah. of brain power sub 15k. Uh, I did go over 15k not too, like a while ago and it's no longer as fun, but every now and then I get to play competitive with some noob friends and. Mm. Smurf a little bit. Uh, so that's yeah, same, okay. same things apply. But it's it's a, it's a it's a map you can't really cut. I don't think it's unique. No. It's aesthetic. It definitely works at the top level. It works in yeah. casual play, despite people being stupid. Uh, I mean, the fact that it took pros long enough to understand taking map control on ancient dictates it. Probably is a good reason why casual players are not going to figure that out for a long time. Like, yeah. you remember, we we had, was it, K23 calling hacks just because Bud from Sky took lane control? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, but like, Anubis, I think, is good. It's, it is it is a good map, and I, I like playing it. I'm very good at it, um, which also makes it more fun. I with it, but that's mostly just because I play it very rarely, and I think mm. people I play with don't understand it. So yeah. It's kind of hard to coordinate a game plan. Yeah, I like Vertigo. I liked it before the changes. I still like it right now. I think we're... I like it even more. Yeah, I, I think people making the case that they should remove Vertigo because the pros don't play it, that's literally just they haven't figured it out yet. We have a player break now. I think we're going to see more Vertigo next season. Maybe it's still going to be the least played map, but I don't think it's going to be like the same thing where where they post a screenshot like Vertigo was only played four times out of these 35 maps in this event. It's like, yeah, it's new. Like, wait, mm -hmm. wait a while. Um... I think the new change was cool. I'm not too sure about the catwalk thing, but I, I, I like the opening up of elevator because it provides, it makes the A site a bit more retakeable because you have more entrance points for the CTs, and yeah. also, I like the new timings where you can just beeline for gap and actually get there before the T's because that was what I was always exploiting as a T player, is that you could always beat oh, yeah. the CT to the ramp timing 
every time. If you just full W throw a flash, you beat them. Yep. One hundred percent of the time. That was the only reason I was having like sixty five percent win rate on Vertigoes because I would always do that on T side and just stomp T sides like seven one. So uh, in casual play, of course. But like obviously, yeah. obviously. Uh, I, do, I now you have the timing and it's a bit more challenging and that's a different different kind of challenge. Yeah, casual um, play has to be a factor though when we talk about maps kind yeah. of roof because it is going to be a factor for Valve. Like, yeah, they, they can but. It. but Having played a lot of face it recently, fucking nobody likes Dust2, and I don't like Dust2 either. It is a boring mm. map. The bomb sites are boring because they're just open spaces with absolutely nothing in them. The like it's also kind of the same thing. A, a, a BXEC on Dust2 is smoking doors. Like it's that's it. Um and I just I just think it's boring. Like it's it's the same map that we've always played. It's it's even more like it's even more played out than Mirage in my opinion because Mirage, I can understand being tired of Mirage. I'm not. I think it's fine. Like it doesn't have Big Mirage hate to hit. Yeah, I'm fine with Mirage. I I hate Dust Two for the same reasons you hate Mirage, pretty much. Um, it's just boring. Like even as a you you have three strats pretty much. You either go B. Or you split A, or you rush long. Like <laughs> those are the three plays you can do on Dust Two. If you do anything else, you have probably a better, like a pre a bigger chance of failing than actually succeeding, because there's like three viable plays, and everybody knows how to do them. Everybody knows the smokes. Everything is just an open space. Like it might as well just be like a flat aim map, in my opinion. Like there's no, well, there's is, no point. It is to the anything. deathmatch map for a reason. Yeah. There's there's nothing to do. So this was a long rant. This was a long answer to the question. Uh, I would cut those two. You would cut Mirage. I think we'd both put Train in. Uh, yep. Yeah. Which is good. We are two mm. sensible people. Uh, <laughs> because honestly, I don't fuck with us two that heavy. So I'm fine with the idea of cutting it. Um, yeah. I've had a little bit of fun playing it recently just with some noob friends. Just sending them out double doors. Like, don't worry. Just go. Just go. And mm. doing all the util for them. Uh, it's 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 a fun map to make use of your slow brained, good aim friends, you know. But aside from yeah. that, it's it's terrible. Um, the next question, which isn't really a question, uh, but the person who asked it is aware of that. It's rather a demand. Make a Romanian super team brackets coach included, coming from Munster, who some of you may not know, is a Romanian coach. <laughs> so it's a really hmm. Odd question. Mm. I wonder why he's asked us this. Uh, but let's start with coach. the players. Yeah, I thought players. we would start with the coach. I don't <laughs> who, know. Who will you pick? <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on. I had the guy. I had a guy in mind. Let me just find his name. It's hard to pronounce. Uh, it might begin with an M. Oh. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's uh, it's Star Killer of Hyper Spirit. <laughs> Ah, yes, of Hyper Spirit fame. <laughs> yes, that guy. Yeah, that's the mm. guy. Obviously, no. I mean, I only know one Romanian coach. Uh, it's Munster. Uh, by the yep. way, if you want to see an interview with Munster, become a member. It's on the channel. Um, just to throw that out there. But yes, yeah, obviously, I'm going to go with Munster. I don't think there's many other choices. I, I looked through the list on Liquipedia of like Romanian coaches. I don't know who any of these guys are. No. Uh no, like these all. are no. I there's absolutely maybe Munster could educate us in the comments if any yeah. of these guys have some merit. Like maybe these guys did something big and we just didn't realize because they're coaches. But um I mean, it it does nothing here speaks to us as international viewers. So I'm also gonna go with Munster because <laughs> I I don't even I rec I don't recognize these guys. I think S S X E with Infinity or Infinite Gaming. I've seen that name. I think he was playing before. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think half of the people on this list are players. Like they just did coaching like once. <laughs> and, yeah, and the, or they 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 coached and played at some point for Nexus yeah. because they are Romanian and that is what Romanians in CS seem to do. Yeah, they play for Nexus. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Munster, if any, if any of these guys like Starkiller or SXE or White, if they if they've done anything we should know about, you should tell us in the comments because I would I would like to know in that case. Yeah, because quickly flicking through their Liquipedias, it's like oh they some of them played as far back as Source, some yeah. of them played in one point six, some of them played for a bunch of teams in Go. But yeah, um, aside from Nexus, I don't really know who these people are. 
Yeah, but that being said, despite the lack of coaches, the players is actually interesting, I think. So yeah, do you want to go first? Choices. Yeah, I think you say there's only one IGL. I say there's I one guy who doesn't shoot his gun too good most of the time, who doesn't stop talking on Na'Vi, who you could just slot in as IGL, and all of a sudden his 0.95 rating looks pretty good. I mean, he's actually averaging like a 1.05, but like in big events, he's rarely at that mark. Uh but I think Ima's yeah, got a case point as nine, point, point 0.95 is generous, I think. <laughs> yeah, he has events where he's sub 0.9, and it's just yeah. horrifying. But his actual average is like 1.06. Mm. So you think, like, why are people talking so much shit? It's because we we watch the game. Like, that's mm. why we talk shit. We watch the game. We know he has highs, but we've we've been subject to the lows. Mm. Let's put it that way. Uh, so no, I think Ima's got a case just because I, I see him on the big screen. I've been to enough events where Na'Vi have played. I, I'm in stadium and I'm looking at this guy yapping away. I'm like, I'm just saying, BTN, not a fragger, to put it politely. Ima has two hands and he likes to talk. So maybe there's a case to make for him. If you want to make it a super theme, like you're talking super theme, I think you can take a risk on Ima being your IGL. I think you make a point there. Um, but then again, if he's doing what 0.95 and calling, uh, well, good job. You've done the same job as BTN uh, well, no. with less mm. with less experience. So it's mm. I mean, I don't know if BTN BTN is like the Nexus mainstay. Uh, Nexus don't really do much. Um, yeah, just just look at BTN's numbers filtered by opposition. Like it, yeah. it Hooksy would be embarrassed. Like. No offense to the lad. I'm sure he calls a, so a tight game because Nexus have historically put up results far beyond their perceived, like, you know, the level of talent we see for them. Like, we don't know most of the players on Nexus a lot of the time. Just, and despite that, they're still tier two competitive. Um, but I'm talking super team. I'm shooting for the stars. I don't want to take it. You can take him, but I'm not going to. It's a fair point. Ah, uh, yeah, you've probably convinced me there. I think Imi, Imi <laughs> is the one you want. Honestly, if if you're gonna if you're gonna, it's kind of cheating because he isn't calling. Like yes, it is but, cheating. Yeah. but I, I'm cool with that. I'm making a super. Yeah. Game. I'm taking silly risks. I get it. I get it. Uh, I'm gonna go for BTN just because that's the option I had. Um, okay. Ne ne like you said, Nexus have punched upwards sometimes, and like he's not. He's averaged a point nine five over his nigh on a decade with Nexus, which is still impressive. Um, not in re not really, but 0.95 isn't too bad. But he's also 35, uh, which I mean, we talked about age before. <laughs> How we are old. We've uh, made, we've made uh, like the case for certain players being no, it's not actually that old. Yeah, it's hard to make a case for 35 being young. Like yeah. in a Counter Strike competitor context, in yeah. the context of life, like bro's not even halfway done. Like come on, he's got time, but. <laughs> In Counter Strike, he's been done for five years. Is the typical oh. standard? Yeah. Okay. Never mind. I was about to say, no. Never mind. Yep. Okay. Yeah, um, that's a I am crazy suggestion. I was about to say, in the same way we're changing Emma to an IGL, we could change BTN to a coach. I think he might be an excellent coach, uh, judging by his track record at the very least. As in, Maybe. having led the best team in Romania for almost a decade. Um, mm. So yeah, but that's that's a different story. I think Monster is still our pick. Um, okay. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take him as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, wh so that's, what else? That's that's a bit of a different one because then like I had a conversation with myself essentially like because my Emma is my IGL like talking riflers. I've separated mm -hmm. the riflers I want into two groups. So I want one of Blitz and Sound in my head, and then I want two of. Adam S, Launex, and Vault. Mm. I had the same thought. Yeah? In that uh, exact sort of split, or did you have it like I, just I as, had, as a group? I had either Imma, Imma or Sound, but I think putting Imma in the IGL spot makes it so you can have Sound. Yeah. Uh, and then I put Launex as my like anchor player, and then picking between either Vault or Adam S. Yeah, so um, I, think, I think I'm going to kind of follow... I'm going to take Sound, I'm going to take Lionx, I'm going to take Vault. Uh, Adam mm. S, I think, not a bad player, just you know, I think I can get more out of Vault because I've seen him play at higher levels, I've seen him play more roles, I've seen him do a good job in a number of positions. And then I, I like Lionx because I still think he gets underrated, like undervalued. 
especially post bleed like trial i've seen a lot of people bring that up like a big point against him i still think he's like a multi-tool he can do a number of things he can be explosive he can be passive he can do just a really diverse job i guess is the way i'd want to phrase it mm. I, I, i'm a big fan of low x i still believe in him um but yeah I've, i'd have him on the team of adam s uh, I'm gonna go for Lonix Sound and Adams actually, because I think you don't Adam want I'm I'm what? fine with Volt, what? but I have had my qualms with him as well. Uh, he's a good player, probably better than Adams to be honest. But if I'm realistically building a team, if I am the general manager of Nexus and I've just been given a buttload of Saudi oil money. Uh, I'm. This is probably the team. I might pick Adam S just because of the, like the space upwards. Volt also could improve, but I. Uh, I feel like Adam S has had like a bit of a trajectory, especially recently. So um, I'm probably gonna pick him. Uh, and sound. I think sound. Sound is someone who is gonna be a talking point later on. Not perhaps not like one of the big future major winners, but definitely someone who we're we're gonna be reckoning with for a while longer. So uh, he's he's a no brainer on here. Mm. Yeah, he's I a wonder. Good, he's, a, he's a good player. Just I wonder if you can make. I wonder if you can make the case for Vault instead of Lonix. You definitely I, can. Like that's an anchor spot. That's somewhere you'd want to see. Um, mm. I might go for that. I might go for that actually because. I think Lonix as well is very good, but I know he's had problems before with not so much in the server, but being a professional player. I think he talked about it himself when they announced the Revenant team, um, which is, I mean, fair enough. Um, if he can fix that, he can fix that. But just for this, I think Volt has the better track record in that case. So I'm going to go Volt out of Mess and Sound, actually. But yes. Uh, the point where we kind of spo spoil for choice is uh, Opera. Yeah, there's there's three choices probably that most people have in their head. I immediately cut it to two because I not not a Zello hater, but I just I very much prefer the other two. Like I'm a big mm. fan of the other two, and I don't give him too much thought, uh, to put it politely. Uh, so I, I like I like Regali a lot. He was a prospect for a reason. And he's, he puts up numbers wherever the hell he goes. Like, that's that's just been a, a factor, uh, like a fact of his play. He's going to mm. get you those numbers. Like, his weakest period was with OG, to be fair. That, that team was garbage. Like, there was no structure to the roster, like the way they played. It was heavy God and Regali. Please win us the entire game on CT side. Otherwise, God only knows what we're going to do. That was mm. the OG game plan at that time. And so I give him a lot of, like, I give him a lot of slack for that. Uh, and then Adex, bro, is Adex is Gucci game Gucci Academy highlights were hilarious because he was putting up stupid numbers whilst being the most aggressive AWPA you'll ever witness. It was absurd, and he's maintained a lot of that aggression more recently. I think he uh, he's going to be a, a fun part of this Revenant team. Like he may not be the best player. Long term, because Nivera has been crazy, and Nivera has been picking up the AWP so much, it's almost like he's their main AWPer at times. But I'm a big fan of Adex. Um, for my team, I'd take Regali. I'd, I'm still taking Regali, because I think he is the best AWPer of the group. But there is mm. a fun conversation to be had about some other guys. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a fair choice. I put five players in you my... Five AWPers? In my top... Uh, I, I think I, I think I strike out, I strike out Zello first because I think he's, he he was a talking point for a long time, putting up numbers on Nexus when he was very young. I rem I remember it was like a not unpopular HLTV forums take when Kenny S was underperforming on G two that they should pick up Zello just because that was at a point where Nexus were. Not really farming tier two because they weren't really winning any <laughs> winning anything, but Zello was putting up like one twenty five, like it was something crazy, and they were like, ah, they're playing online anyway. Zello is just gonna stomp on G two instead, and then I was like, mm, not really, but like, I mean, people people have been talking about him. He got a shot on Ecstatic, which didn't really work out, 
No. Um, I think Ecstatic were already pretty much on the decline at that point. It wasn't Zello's fault, necessarily. Um, then he got another shot on Sprout, where he replaced... Also, perhaps not really his fault. He's just a different kind of opera in that case. Because I remember it was Refresh he was calling at that point, unless he left. But whoever was the caller at that point talked about, despite Slacks barely putting up a 1-0-0... He was very important to the team because he would come with a lot of viewpoints and a lot of tactics, like he would talk a lot. Um, Zello wasn't doing that. Um, so ne not necessarily his fault, perhaps. Maybe it was just a different kind of opera. But I'm going to strike him out first. Here's one which I think might not be valid on merit, but I think would be cool. Do you think there's a case for Anna making this a mixed team? I cannot... In good coach, if Regali didn't exist, I'd entertain the point. Mm. I don't think she's as good as Regali, and I think it's a it's a big enough gap that I don't think it's a conversation. Mm. Um, if you you could honestly put her on the team, and I don't think they'd lose too much step if they were just playing tier two events. Like, yeah. I don't think it'd be that bad. Like I've seen her, I've seen a lot of her game. She's pretty fucking good. Yeah, I don't think it'd be right to put her in there over someone like Regali, though. Like. I don't would think you put good enough? Would you put her on Nexus over Jello? I I kind of would. I, mean, I would tomorrow. I, I, I've got my opinions about Jello, so <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I kind of would. would. I kind of would. It, it it probably end up if it actually would happen, it unfortunately be like some sort of marketing gimmick. You know, yeah. it wouldn't be done with the purest intentions, and it, it probably no, be I mean, an issue with the team. But it would it would be a gamble on making headlines and like. Let's see if this works out, and if it works out, we're like... The, I just, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're breaking molds. Um, but all right, yeah, so she was my she was my fifth candidate. I, I think there's she was, I, so I, was just looking, I looked up the Romanian players. Just as, when you said five, I was like, how the hell's he got to five? Mm -hmm. And then I saw Arda at the top of the Romanian list. I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to make that case. Yeah, uh, but I th okay, so Regali and Alex are probably the two serious candidates, and I think Regali is the better option. Yeah. Uh, Odex close behind. I think there is more and more there is a small case for Modo because he is everybody everybody wrote him off when Extas like scouted him out for this TSM team as like a big prodigy and then TSM did jack shit. Uh, he I did mean, everyone oh, on the TSM roster did jack shit. Like it was crazy. everyone on the TSM roster did jack shit. He was kind of fine statistically. He wasn't like a big weak link. And then now he's on OG. He's also doing kind of fine. Like, not 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 a, not incredible. He's one ten, but next to Heavy God's one twelve. That looks kind of good. Um, I don't know if there's anywhere for him to move after OG. How do you keep How do you keep moving after OG in 2024? So uh, I don't know if there's anything else for him to do moving forward. But I think more and more this guy's like kind of showing like what. Well, you know, he might not be the next Zaiwu. I don't know if Xtas ever claimed that he was, but um, people were saying that because they were like, oh, he scattered out, he scattered out Zaiwu. Now he scattered out this random Romanian guy nobody has heard of. He might be the next Zaiwu. <laughs> so, we had heard of him. He wasn't the next Zaiwu. <laughs> <laughs> um, but more and more, I think he's just he's just fine. No. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to sneakily say that if we're doing this in one year, there's a non-zero chance he is a serious pick. Uh, just because I, I sort of see that like if, if OG somehow will have a decent team and start playing Lance again, he might do something. But yeah. Uh, anyway, struck him out. Uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Regali as well. But I think I think Audix is very close behind at that, at that point because I, I feel like Regali Regali is he's not. He's not past his peak, but he's definitely seen better days, like career-wise at the moment. Right. Um, he hasn't really impressed post... Um, actually, post Copenhagen Flames. When he was in Copenhagen Flames, that was probably the point when I think he he impressed the most. Um, he's had a great and, time like in a lot of the games I've watched on OG, like hmm. back when he was on OG. And he was, it was literally, I wasn't being facetious when I said it was, hey, Heavy God Regali, win us a CT side, please. Mm. It literally was that. Like, yeah. 
he, he does have problems where I think he doesn't have enough ideas and creative, like, approaches on T-side uh, to, like, go and influence the game on that side of things. But on the CT side of it, god damn. If you need a guy to just lock down a bombsite, you need a guy to rotate into a spot, get a multi-kill, win a clutch, do all this kind of stuff, he can do it and does it. Mm. Just, yeah, a bit of a one-sided player. And that OG side was just crap. So. I'm not. I'm not gonna make this a big point, uh, but so far in online play, he's actually being narrowly outperformed by Modo in only online games, because in rating wise, because he wasn't really doing. He he wasn't doing too hot on that team. Like he was fine, but he wasn't doing. I mean, OG, too hot. sure, yeah, yeah. But in Tropic, he put up numbers and left. Like it was crazy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they didn't. Yeah, uh, they had their own thing. Uh, so yeah, but Audex is creeping in there. I don't know if this Revenant team is going to be the one which is uh, which is going to put Audex in the spotlight. I really uh, won't. I'm going to be honest. I watched some of their games. Nivera has the AWP, honestly, more than him. It's crazy how much Nivera is AWPing. Uh, so I don't know if it's going to be a particularly flattering team for Audex. The results and stats aren't exactly flattering at the moment for anyone. Uh, I guess Raiko is the one who's standing out. And having a I good mean, time. Nivera's got the numbers as well that you'd kind of. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's fine numbers, just not like considering the opposition because they're playing like what they're playing Johnny Speeds twice. They're playing some random Finnish team I had never heard yeah. of before this game. Uh, Verdant twice. Um, yeah, they're still finding I, their feet. I'm not too worried about the. Team. Yeah, they're still finding their feet, but so far it's not like. We, sometimes there's a team that just gets built, starts winning a bunch of shit, and you're like, "All right, let's pay attention." Uh, yeah, I think I, for them though, like it's the player break. They're playing the European Division Two of Res or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I'm kind of watching them play. It feels like I'm watching Crack against yep. the real team, which is fine. Yep. Like, honestly, go for yeah, it. Yeah, it is fine. I'm, I'm is not fine. putting too much stock in it just yet. Uh, but I think we need to wrap up. So we're forty. We need to wrap this up. It's only two questions. Uh, Emma Adams, Sound Regali, oh, and Volt was my team. So that's I like that. I like that. And the monster is the coach. Yep, yep, and I've taken Munster, Ima, Sound, Launex, Vault, Regali. Right, final question, and it's from Quacker, a, a member, some of you may have heard of. Uh, it's out of Quacker and King T, who is the cute one and who is the hot one? <laughs> now, I, I'm not sure how to answer this uh, without being too rude. So... <laughs> what?! Oh, I don't think there's a debate on hot. I think we can have a conversation about cute. Uh, <laughs> there's two. There's two good options. How could you be rude in this case? <laughs> there's two compliments. <laughs> yeah, but if I give them both to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not gonna answer this one either. I let the comments decide. Yeah, let's let the comments decide. I think, uh, you know, my opinion. My ego knows yeah. no mounds. Like. I always believe it's me, but we'll see what yeah. the comments think. Um, if there's any women out there whose opinion would be more fucking viable for us, go nuts. I mean, if there's any men. <laughs> I mean, I'd take a compliment from anyone. Like, it's fine. I'm, I'm not picky. <laughs> I'm 26 and a bit years of life, I think, what? Mm. Two compliments? True. Like, I think I can count them. Like, mm. One's from a dude, so we'll take it. <laughs> uh, right, the Eternal Shuffle. <laughs> BC Game have signed Guardian as their coach, which, uh, whatever. And then Joel, Anarquez, and Cachanito. Or Cacanito, or Shashanito. Satsanito. Whatever. Um, it's so hard to say. That makes no yeah. sense. Um, I don't really... I'm so far mixed, in my opinion, of this roster. So mm. I feel like signings like Anarquez and Guardian are just weird. Joel's talented, and Satsanito has been good on certain rosters, but I'm just... I'm confused, man. <laughs> what is this roster trying to do? Is there going to be an IGL signed, or are we doing the Anarchez IGL orb thing? Like, what is it? Oh, oh that's, that's actually good. interesting. Yeah, I didn't even realize that they didn't have an IGL. They're missing yeah. two players. They're missing two players. If one's an IGL, then we'll... I'll maybe have a more positive view of this. Uh, if M80 fall apart, like some people think they will, maybe these guys sweep up Sin, which I'd be very happy with. Actually, mm. at that point, I'd be very invested in this team at that point. But if yeah. it's if it just feels like it feels like it's going to be random tier two guys, just thrown together under an org, 
Mm. So I'm not too excited. I mean, I'm going to watch them because Joel's there. But aside from that. It's good names to have picked up, like just picked up like that. Uh, all three of them. Or four of them. Because these, I think all four are players who could reasonably have leverage to end up on better teams. I think all all of the, uh, maybe not Guardian as a coach, because that's kind of unproven, but uh, Anarchist, Joel, and Satsanito, I think all of them could reasonably replace someone on an existing team, um, just like on merit. And still they choose to build this completely new project with Guardian as a coach, which is interesting. Um, so, but... Um, it's kind of a, it's a betting company. Uh, their marketing is very much based around the process of betting. I've realized because all of their like announcement videos and stuff is like we're making a bet on this player being good. Yeah. We're taking a gamble on this player. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all of that it's wording. It's subtle, but I think it may have something to do with gambling. It's really subtle. They they're very much. It's they're very much like taking they're very much leaning into the betting angle unlike maybe some other betting betting company esports orgs they're very much leaning into the fact that we are a gambling company <laughs> uh like proudly announcing it one of the funny things was the first frame of the joel announcement video was we bet just those two words which is ironic in an interesting way uh yeah i mean they, they made some statements about signing joel because obviously people are gonna have questions when you sign joel and they're mm. like, yeah, we feel like he's done his rehab, essentially. Uh, it's, the, it's not actually what they said, but I'm going to phrase it that way. Mm. And Guardian knows that he's really talented, and we relied on Guardian to make the picks because he knows the scene better than we do. And I was like, all right, fair. If you, That's I, fair. I also hope he stopped betting on his own games because yeah. when he's not betting on his own games and he's playing his sort of roles, I struggle to see a better prospect currently still as a prospect like donk is in tier one he's not no longer a prospect besides joel i see no other gods like in this in this tier two scene like this guy yeah. is bananas when he wants to yeah be. um they need nigel and they need some sort of like anchor player uh, that's pretty much it yeah i think i mean the guys who were benched on tropic are not half bad picks i think there's players you could pick up from there marix perhaps uh, not, he wasn't not the not, best. Mm, not, not the, the best signing, um, especially not for the, the. If you want a, a, a an anchor player, nah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not wasting that pick on Marix. Yeah, Marix. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm. He's got a spot in a team, probably tier two, tier two and a half. As a more aggressive guy, as a maybe an entry guy, but yeah, I don't want him on my uh, on my anchor yeah. spots. Someone is going to end up there. Uh, yeah. But I think with, with the names they have, they have some leverage to get some decent names. Maybe, no maybe idea Buzz. If, if anyone from the Entropic bench, maybe Buzz. Yeah, I could... Mm, no, uh, I was about to say ZTR, but I don't think he ever wants to play with Joel again. Uh, <laughs> Funnily <I'm>, enough. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> it, it would... He would fit the bill as, like, an av uh, available it's IGL. Perfect, but... Yeah. Know, uh, not happening. Uh, no, he won't, for sure. Uh, that's why you don't bet on your own games, kids. You ruin <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah, uh, let's move on. Yeah, Zeus leaves Liquid. <laughs> we we knew this was coming, I think, when Skulls started getting shopped around. It did feel like one was there because of the other, and then because one was the other one's pick, and it was such a catastrophe, that mm. a lot of faith was lost. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, Zeus is gone. We're looking at a new coach. We're looking at new IGL, potentially, or an IGL from within the team, which will be a conversation we'll have later, I think. Um, in any case, yeah. Liquid are definitely rebuilding, and well, well, we say this every time, they can't do much worse, so let's see what they come up with. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Like, it's the same rig and roll yeah. over and over again. I don't want to... Start, started from the bottom, ended slightly below the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's the like, story of every single Liquid team. It's It feels like Liquid have entered their, like, 2008-2013 Tottenham Hotspur era. Like, we're 11th. We're making changes. Hey, yeah. yo, we're 11th. Like, it's just the same <laughs> thing. Constantly. Yeah. Um, yeah, Zeus leaves Liquid. 
I've probably made the case for Zeus to coach a lot of teams, or probably I know I have. I have made the co uh, case for Zeus you coaching a, a lot of, of teams. I'm a fan of Zeus. I think, I think he he was just like a guy with a lot of tier one experience when a lot of coaches who had tier one experience were not available for one reason or another, and he yes. probably. Uh, but then also things haven't really looked too good. Like he was on Fluxo that didn't really do much, and then now he's on Liquid that didn't really do much. Especially, he, yeah, he's had a bad run recently, and he had like terrible spells in the middle. Like think of the MIBR days; yeah. those were not good. But like he won trophies with Luminosity and SK. Cool. Yeah, it's the same roster, but still. Um, yeah. And then he won trophies with Liquid. Not that many, but he won a couple little trophies. Mm. So it's not like it's been all terrible since the Luminosity SK period. And then with Eel Geniuses, yeah. he won some cups, like online, but still. It yeah, happened. that. So that that liquid period is kind of why I wanted him, and I wanted him back for liquid because I didn't like I didn't like Edren. Um, so I think that could have been cool, but now now we actually got that. It wasn't cool, um, especially <laughs> him 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 effectively being the guy who brought skulls in, and now skulls just did not Such fit or work choice. whatsoever. That's just you know never let this guy scout anything ever again. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure that we can speak to all his scouting acumen, but it was clear as day to certain people that Skulls was not a tier one product at that mm. point in time. Mm. So yeah, he needs to clear his biases, I think. Like, yeah, he needs an so, inherent bias course, like I've had to do at work. Like, remember, it's just because certain people share certain ethnicities and backgrounds doesn't mean you can presuppose things about them. Zeus, just because they're Brazilian, doesn't mean they're good. <laughs> <laughs> skulls so like let's try a, a different yeah. approach like have you heard of europe we got loads of good players here yeah uh, speaking of someone who heard of europe and all their good players g2 have confirmed mobs md yeah, as their yeah, yeah, they heard of europe's good players went fuck it yeah. guatemala what's up <laughs> no i mean mo <laughs> mobs heard of europe's good players uh and yeah 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 i get i get yeah. what you mean now but yeah no yeah. g2 signed mobs um no one saw this coming it's not been rumored at all uh, but now it's official, and that's awesome. Uh, when you, if you watch this guy from the beginning, it's been a long time coming. He's earned this, and yeah, he's going to fuck it up. Not not a bad way, in a good way. Like He's going to fuck shit up. Like I know he will. Assuming G2 don't just stick him in fucking Nexa rolls, but <laughs> if they put him I, in his sort of spots, at least the majority of his own spots, he's going to give you solid numbers. He's going to be explosive, and G2 are going to look way better. I I looked at this before we started recording, because um, <clears throat> they do have a fucking roll headache. Uh, they have three players who probably all want to be towards the front end. Someone is gonna get fucked over, and it's. <laughs> I mean, anyone from the outside looking in would say it has to be Hooksy. Uh, yes. No. How could it be anyone else getting fucked? Over? Some something interesting was. I mean, some people were also calling for a double move, which I sort of saw. Like, I think also still do. Yep. For a while, I more and more now. I feel like that might have been done at this point, if that was the case. But uh, early on, when it, this started getting rumored, I was like, this has to be that Mobs is the Hooksy replacement, and someone else is going to be the next replacement. Um, but maybe this is just it, and Hooksy is going to be the anchor player. Or Mobs is going to be the anchor player because they're going to fuck him over because he's the new kid. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Someone, uh, I saw Armchair IGL on Twitter. He had a debate with me and Nero where he made the case that Nico should be the one to take the anchor spots and play like a gym pat kind of style. And then boot Hooksy, Nico takes IGL from those positions. Mobs just fucks around in Nico's positions and someone else comes in as some other kind of role. Um, which I thought was insane, but it was very interesting. Um, it's it's hard to root for that idea when you think of Nico, despite not being the best player in the world this year, is mm. still like one of the maybe four best riflers. Yeah. Uh, the case that was being made was that Nico, no matter what rifling position he plays, he is going to be one of the best players in that position. Like if you stick him as small sight anchor, He's he's gonna do that well just because he has the mechanics to get himself out of crazy situations. Um, but it's also like, would you really? Why would you do that when you could have the absolute best out of him in his best positions? Like it's, um, yeah. I think 
I think it, it would be interesting if there's any more developments with this G2 team, like if there's one more player going out. Uh, otherwise, I feel like they haven't really solved anything. It would still be a better option to have JKS um, in here. So, <laughs> yeah, like they're still, they're still a couple of paces behind where they were last year, which is just kind of sad to say, to be honest. Um, yeah. I think it would it, it, it would be cool to see though if mobs could do something here because this is a big team which uh, somehow makes keeps making playoffs despite how many problems they have even when they have two underperforming players and one which is at a wedding and one which just does not play counter strike they still win a big LAN uh, so yeah. somehow these guys make their way into deep runs and that somehow is Muncie so. Um, Cool for mobs to make an impact, I guess. Honestly, okay, the, the thing that could happen is that they just say, fuck it, it doesn't matter how much Hooks and Hunter are doing fuck all, because now we have three players who can just win a game single-handedly. And that might be something, but um, I don't think so. I, I think someone someone is getting fucked over, and it's going to be Nico, Hooksy, or mobs. Uh, and it's not going to be Nico. I hope it is Hooksy. But it could also just be mobs. So yeah, uh, we'll see. We shall indeed. Uh, mm. I, I, I can't wait to see them play, really, because I'm just mm. a big mobs guy. Uh, no, there's not much more to add. I, I was hope I'm still hoping for a double move, and for them to take the risk, just go for it as Nico IGL. And when I look at the roster now, even I'm still like, yeah, well, we could also cut Hunter if we really wanted. <laughs> yeah. There's probably better moves to make, but it's fine. We'll see, we'll see I what did happens. what I did look at was has Hooksy ever played a more passive style? Like has he ever not been the hard entry? And the answer is kind of. In Copenhagen Flames, he mm. was taking going off of opening duels. Uh Roy and Zyphon were like the bigger space takers on that team. Like it was kind of, it was kinda of narrow, like it wasn't thirty percent or anything, but No, the the way that team played was very contact heavy in the mid round. Mm. And so, yeah. yes, Zyphon is a guy, if you're playing contact, Zyphon's the guy you want to just let walk out into a space and just take yeah. a straight up aim duel. So yeah, they, they, they weren't as, they play a different style is the best way I can think about it. But like on the f final exec, yeah, you still want Hooksy running in and dying because what the fuck else are you going to do? <laughs> He's not going to win yeah. you most plant. In terms of, like, for the level they played at, arguably the most successful style that Hooksy has ever played um, for their level of competition. Um, but as in winning everything in tier 1.5 is in this argument better than winning three trophies with the G2. Um, I I think maybe go back to that style, like maybe change it up a bit, maybe let Hooksy, maybe buy into Hooksy's system. Cough, cough, Kadian. So uh, it would be... Could be something. It's hard to read this team. It's really hard to read this team in in general, in my opinion. I feel like who is who's doing what, how like whose influence is doing what. It's a it's a, a a team where I you need to think a lot about the personalities on the team more than some others, um, which makes it difficult to make arguments about what they could or should do, in my opinion, because. Uh, we re some we're just guessing like just the fact like how much power does Nico have, um, it's, it's so it's so weird. So something's gonna happen. It's gonna be interesting no matter what happens. Uh, welcome welcome to tier one, mobs and rest in peace M80. Yeah, pretty much. All right, Talon are rumored to enter CS. Uh, it looks like the IGL is gonna be Azza, who's finally out uh, in out from the cold, whatever you wanna say. He's been away a long time, and the seems that yeah. the roster they're looking to put together is uh, Netic, Addict, Hazard, and then one of Hades or Khan from uh, the European like low level scene. If you know those names, uh, Hades not so much low level, but Khan you have to be following fairly deep. I'm not too, I'm not too negative about this. Like I've heard some negative takes about it, like, but I, I like the idea. You got Azza, an actual IGL. You've got Netic, the actual talent of Australia right now. He's the biggest talent. Addict and Hazard are solid players who just need more coaching and more leadership. And then a decent European AWPA. Yeah, why not? 
this roster's all right. <laughs> this is not a bad attempt at making a team. So I'm kind of down yeah. for it. I I think the negative negatives here would be Azer and Hazer. <laughs> Azer uh, and Hazer. Azer and Hazer. Uh, <clears throat> Azer has kind of flopped in everything he did since 2020 which is i mean he's, he's still got a lot of merit under his belt like he's still he's still done, done a lot and if some if if it just clicks this is gonna click um but yeah it's also interesting because i think this would mean the team has to be europe based because wow. i think Azra lives in copenhagen oh does he yeah since a while back um, or maybe he's he's just moving back to Aussie. Maybe he's tired of Denmark. But um, interesting. They'd still play the Oceanic RMR, of course. But <clears throat> like, uh, yeah, Hazard. I've heard a lot about like how even in Oceania, which is let's be honest, easy. Uh, he is not always the perfect player. Um, doesn't like stand out. I mean, he stands out, but he's not like. He makes a lot of mistakes, apparently, um, is what I've heard. I, I'm not awake at those hours, so I don't watch. Uh, <laughs> but uh, And then what What I've heard about Netic is that, yes, he's really, really, really good. Roosters supposedly pay a decent amount. So, like, I don't know if that... I don't. I can't remember if they're an org or if they're just an orgless team or, like, a bedroom org or something. But, like, he, pays, he gets a livable or slightly more than livable salary on Rooster, and he gets to play with what is effectively like his best friends. Like, this is his five stack. Um, and they get to be the second best team in, in Australia. So... Uh, th hmm. I, they I'm are. Trying not to be too dismissive of the second best team in Australia, but come on. Who's better? Um, I don't care if who's better or if they're not the second best. It should. Wow, you're the second best team in Australia. Cool. Um, you want to... Are you actually trying to be a CS pro, or what? What are we talking about? I mean, about? As, like, as, as long as, as long as EPL has two oceanic spots, what does it matter? Rooster are going to be there. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so apparently he's had a couple of offers. He's just said no. Uh, so Batalan are probably paying more than a livable salary. So he would probably be down for this. Um, the op spot is interesting because you would imagine that Hades might have better offers than moving to Australia, but it would also be interesting because that's somewhere where he can really have an impact. This is like the Fuzi going to Asia kind of thing. Because uh, basically, in Aussie, you can just win by having a good opper. Like, it's like this one cheap trick that doctors hate. Um, <laughs> like, it's... There's, there's not a lot of good op talent right there at the moment. And the op role being what it is, you can sort of overpower a team if you have a very competent one. So Hades going there could have been really interesting. I don't know if he will. Uh, it seems weird. I would imagine he has better offers in Europe, even if he has to hold out for a while longer. Um, Khan, I think I think Khan was linked to Cloud9, like in the same vein as Heavy God. Um, so... Okay, then again, so is IC, and I guess IC is sort of confirmed. So scratch that. Um, yeah, I mean, cool, cool. I li I like Aussie. I'll take. Uh, I I'd watch this team if they played reasonable hours. It's yes. not exactly the new Renegades, is it? <laughs> Big if, and I did just on a on a whim check. Mm. They're not definitely second, because Bad News Kangaroos beat them at most fucking events. They just happen to have got uh, the second place for this one Pro League qualifier. Like, yeah. Uh, let's see, Bad News Kangaroos, that's old Vertex, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also a good team, to be honest. I, that's where Addict... Is that where Addict and Hazard are being stolen from in that case? That is, yes. Mm, right, yeah. Then you might be correct, yeah. So uh, let's move on to the final roster move, which isn't even a roster move. It's a rumor that NRG are interested in Nitro, who wasn't able to make the transition from M80's Valorant team to the Counter-Strike team, is also part of that same story, I believe. Yes. And that's what he initially wanted to do, but wasn't allowed to, or they didn't want him to do that, so they didn't take him on. I guess it's sticking with Sin as their leader. So NRG potentially interested. I think currently calling on NRG is... Crap, who is it? 
Is it Walco? It was Daps, but then he got he moved to coach, and then yeah, Walco is currently calling. And yeah, Nitro coming out of Valorant, it's maybe not an upgrade in terms of his current understanding of Counter Strike. Coming um, out of Valorant for the second time. Yeah, for the second time, but it's yeah. still Nitro as a leader. I think he's still the best NA can do. <laughs> so I'd be down for it. I'm I like this NRG roster in principle, uh, just because there's some players I'm rooting for on that team. I don't know if it outright makes them better just off the bat, though. And they just qualified for the Blast Premier sh like full showdown. Do they start messing around with it now? F yeah, we'll see if they actually make this move happen. But Nitro coming back to CS is interesting because just when North America looked completely devoid of IGL options and it looked like they'd have to go external for IGL and probably AWP if they want to be really competitive, mm. uh, their one captain comes back. So a curious move, but I don't think too impactful. Mm. Yeah. Um, um, I think they. I think I. I have a be Nitro these days. Po after the whole Valorant shebang, it just leaves a kind of a bad taste in my mouth for some reason. Because it's like, it feels like he's just barging in and being like, "I'm the goat." But then, is that really warranted? Like, has he? Is he actually gonna do jack shit with this? I think NRG improved quite a bit when they got Walko in uh, as the caller. Um, like you said, they well, did just qualify for showdown. Yeah, and it was Daps moving to the bench also opens up a lot of fragging because Daps was not on it mm. individually. Yeah, and Walco has uh, been, so I think that's been a big improvement for them as well. I don't think Nitro is uh, too big on the fragging either. <laughs> uh, um, so it's like it's this is not a clear upgrade for me. Um, I think I think it could be like that if they're interested. Daps has worked with Nitro. It's not like they're just going off of name value. Like if they if they, if this is a decision that the team has made and they genuinely feel like he would be an upgrade over Waco, like Daps feels he would be an upgrade over Waco, then fine. But it's like it it, it does feel a bit like he's just barging in and just being like, oh guys, I I won a Grand Slam. Hello guys. <laughs> like it's. He, because he just keeps jumping back and forth. It just it, to me, it just feels entitled to do that. To be like, sorry guys, I just don't feel CS anymore. I'm gonna go to Valorant in 2020, or whenever the fuck he was. Uh, yeah, it was. And then you know he goes there. I don't know if he did jack shit in Valorant. I don't watch that shit game. But uh, then he came back. He was like, I feel like I have unfinished business in CS. He gets a spot on Liquid. It's like, whoa, Captain America is back. They do jack shit. Rumor is that Jakindar was the one doing most of the work anyway, um, and like his he he just showed up to mid round some of the some of the maps uh, in the end, and that was when they got, when they got a little bit better. And then like he fucks off to Valorant again, like ah oh, I just feel like Counter Strike wasn't a good fit for me right now, and now he's coming back again, and it's like I still feel I have unfinished business in CS, and it's like dude just pick one or retire, like it's. Stop! Stop doing this. And if I, if this energy team was is moving upwards, they're doing better with Walco. They're qualifying for stuff. If that is what's going on, Nitro comes in, ruins this team, because that might happen. If that happens, what the fuck has he accomplished? Like at that point, he is a net negative for the NA scene in 2024. Like. Yeah. At that point, he has done damage to the, the NAC scene in 2024, which I feel like is the risk here. Because like, and then he's just gonna fuck off to Valorant or Apex Legends or whatever the fuck he feels like playing this week. So it's just gonna be. I feel like that's a big risk. I feel like, but again, like we we only see, like I like to say, we on, only see 10 percent of the puzzle in in like building a team. If they feel that uh, if they if they feel Nitro is a better fit, then Nitro probably is a better fit. But uh, to me, it just it, I don't like it. Like more and more, I just don't like Nitro because of what the fuck he's doing with this. Like just pick a game, pick a game and do something, whatever the fuck you want. Don't you can't just barge in and expect to be a tier one player um, just off of five year old merits. Like come in and come in and do something and stick around and then like and then you know prove prove your worth. 
well, again, because honestly, that that's just lost. Like n this, the value of Nitro in my mind is just lost at this point because he just he just he has to prove that again. Because it was five years ago. It was five years ago he did something that was like properly impressive. I feel like because uh, on on the second time on Liquid he didn't do much, and like I don't think he's gonna do much on Energy either. But let's let's see what happens. Um, so yeah. I mean, yeah, do whatever, I guess, but just pick one. Like, damn. <laughs> just fucking pick one and stick with it. Yeah, just yeah. fucking pick one, yeah. It is frustrating. The uh, endless back and forth, the saga. But I, think would, uh... I think it would have been cool if you landed on, like, nouns. Like, that would be kind of cool. Like, that's yeah. the theme. They, they just brought in Rush for, like, some experience. They bring some more experience in. Like... Maybe he can let Junior and George do something. It's a chance for him to prove himself. Oh. Like, if he can... What? Sorry, I was just trying not to laugh. Um... <laughs> like, no, but Junior. maybe, like, <laughs> at that point, prove himself. No, like, he's play, doing it again. Ballerin. If I had to go come back and I had to coach, I had to lead fucking Junior, I just, I just go back <laughs> to Valorant. Like, the best gig in North American Counter-Strikes that he could have got, I think, is NRG. Like that's yeah. the lowest he can go. Um, otherwise, yeah, don't bother. I wouldn't bother. I don't think he's he's coming back doing the Stanislaw grind. Like mm. he doesn't want to have to rebuild from scratch. And guess what? Stanislaw already did that and took all the best pieces and now is upgrading to Europeans. Mm. And that took him like two years or something yeah. ridiculous. Like I, uh, yeah. he's not going to do that. No, but I'm saying do that. Like, just do that. Yeah, but he won't. So I, I think it's the only option. Yeah, that's is, what. Gonna... That's what. I, that's why I don't like him. That's why I, more and more I just don't like Nitro whatsoever. He's get him gonna out of just here. try and get us straight into a gig that's worth trying with. Uh, and I don't think it's gonna be very productive. Um, so no, I agree mm. with you. It's a waste of everyone's time. Uh, but hey, Captain America gets certain privileges. Even if that means he can spend years doing nothing and fucking us over. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think they should take him on. But hey, we'll see. It's NRG. They've made terrible choices before. I'm sure they'll do it again. Yep. And that wraps up the show. Uh, somehow an hour, 12 minutes. As usual, we thought it'd be short. As usual, we end up rambling. An hour, 20 minutes? 12, but yes. Oh, fuck, I must have blacked out in the Q&A part. <laughs> I don't remember anything. Yes, we spent 40 <laughs> minutes on two Q&A questions. Uh, oh, fuck. All right, yeah. Yeah, as usual. Uh, so, yeah. Thanks to everyone who made it this far. If you did, you're my hero. And yeah, special member content is up. There's more coming, so be sure to become a member. It's cheap and it's fun. So yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.